So I'm Leo Robert. Um, so I'm a postdoc. I will have a position uh, at the university in France uh, next September. So this work was done when I was a PhD student with uh, Pascal Lafocade and uh, Christina Onete. Uh, Olivier Blasi and Johanna Boranou are also uh, co-authors. So as said, we are going to talk about post-compromise security, how to give a metric uh, in a specific class of protocols, uh, the messaging uh, applications. So a bit of context. Uh, suppose that we have Alice wishing to communicate with her bank accounts. Uh, for this, she will use um, a protocol like TLS. So in this work, we only uh, look at um, messaging application like Signal, uh, WhatsApp, um, iMessage, etc. Securing the communication means that we want to ensure some uh, security properties like uh, confidentiality, uh, integrity, or authenticity. And in this work, we look at one security property that is uh, post-compromise security. So for this, uh, suppose that we have Alice and Bob communicating through uh, Signal. And uh, so they are exchanging messages. And at some point, Alice uh, gets compromised for some, some reason. So the, uh, adversaries, uh, the adversary recovers some messages, uh, some information about uh, the key material to recover some messages. And since sig signal is post-compromise secure, it means that at some point, the adversary will have no longer access to the messages and uh, the protocol will heal. So the first question is, is to ask is, uh, I say that at some point the adversary will uh, have no longer access to the messages. So uh, how to define this, uh, this time? So the first thing we want to do is to give a metric of how many uh, uh, messages are lost, basically. And then uh, this will allow us to um, compare protocols with uh, post-compromise security. So a, a critical uh, notion for this uh, metric that we'll give is the notion of stage. So suppose that we have Alice and Bob communicating uh, through signal again. So the first message of the, f the, first message of the communication uh, is on chain one of Alice. Uh, as long as uh, Bob is not responding, Alice uh, will uh, continue in the chain number one. And a stage is just a message. Uh, and stage one, one is the first message of the first chain. St uh, stage two, one is the second message of the first chain. As long as Bob is not responding, Alice will stay in, the, in that very chain. And uh, if Bob is responding, then we'll go for uh, chain number two and uh, restart with uh, uh, message number one. So uh, stage X, Y is just uh, the XES message of chain Y. Um, and the chain are just uh, incremented when the speaker are uh, swapping, uh, are changing. Um, one, the one thing to notice is that for each message, we have a unique and different um, key that we call message key. Um, and so the stage XY is just the message key uh, XY. Another way to, to put it, uh, let's see the sort of general uh, stage flow in a signal. So they first uh, doing a X3DH, which is an authenticated key exchange, uh, so Diffelman. Uh, so first, uh, Alice will send the first message of the first chain, so stage number one, one. And she will continue as long as Bob is not responding. So we'll have an horizontal evolution of the, the stage, of the message. If uh, Bob is responding, then we go to uh, chain number two, so vertical evolution. Uh, and suppose that for some attack, the attacker recovers uh, all the chain of Bob, the second uh, chain. Uh, and the healing uh, comes at the chain number three. So for this, we will say that signal is uh, infinity one PCS. Infinity because we have an arbitrary uh, number of messages in the, the chain that is uh, compromised. And one uh, thing that we have only one chain. And this is 
the idea of our metric. Let's look at uh, some of the protocols, like SED, for example, which is a um, variant of signal, but in the identity-based uh, paradigm. And so for this, if we have only one stage that is compromised, we say that we have one zero uh, PCS uh, security. So can we say that SED is better than uh, signal to our uh, PCS? So at first, we cannot say that because uh, those two protocols are not the same. Uh, so the key hierarchy is not is different. Uh, said is identity based. We have a KDC versus a server for signal, so we cannot say uh, that. So our goal is to build a generic model to compare protocols with the PCS metric, to have a metric of this, and to see uh, basically what are the the key components of a good PCS. And basically, our metric just counts the number of messages that are lost. So model, a security model, uh, so this is our main contribution. Uh, so we give a framework to analyze uh, protocols with post-compromise security. And the security model is composed of three parts. So the first is the definition of the protocol. Uh, so for this, we want to have a generic approach of uh, protocol. So this is what we call CK protocol, for secure channel establishment with key evolution. So in its, with this description, we want to, to give a lot of uh, protocols with PCS um, security properties. Um, then for the model, we have the security property. So here we have only one um, security property, which is the, the PCS. And then for the security model, we need to define the adversaries. We want to know what they are doing, when, and how. Um, so, for instance, is the adversary able to uh, compromise the server? Uh, can he uh, stop messages, so having access to the network? Uh, does he have access to a smartphone, so can he recover some key material? And combine those adversaries and give uh, a taxonomy. So first for the CK, so the protocol, the definition of the description of the protocol. Basically, we want all the protocols the messaging uh, protocol uh, fits in uh, that description. So first we have a setup made by a server, which is a super user, uh, a registration for uh, participants, for parties, and then uh, a session occurring between uh, two participants uh, and um, for sending and receiving messages. So I said, we, we did a, like a taxonomy of adversaries, so we wanted to classify all possible adversaries uh, for this kind of uh, protocol and uh, for the PCS uh, property. Um, so basically, global, medium, and local uh, refers to the fact that the adversary could uh, compromise a certain level on the key hierarchy. Um, so, for instance, local, the adversary can compromise ephemeral uh, keys, like uh, the message keys, uh, medium for uh, medium term keys, and uh, global for long term uh, keys. Then we can combine it with uh, some, uh, uh, some other uh, characteristics, like the, the power, uh, meaning that uh, active, he has access to the network, and passive, uh, he doesn't. And uh, the access traits, like uh, does he have access to the server? as an insider or not, or outsider. Then for all protocol, we can give a theorem. So for instance, let's, uh, let's uh, see for signal. So we can describe it as a CK protocol and with some, uh, some assumption and in the, the ROM model, uh, we can give uh, a metric for a given adversary. So here for local passive uh, outsider, we have an infinity one um, PCS for signal. And for this, we are doing a, a, a two-step uh, approach. So first, give an attack. So this will give a lower bound of the metric uh, because we cannot do less. Uh, we have a specific attack. And then uh, show uh, with a security proof uh, by a distinguishability game that we have the security back 
uh, at some uh, number of uh, message um, stages. So here are the results for all the protocols that we have uh, looked at, and uh, so. This uh, cell is for the previous, uh, previous theorem. And so we did it for each of these uh, cases. Of course, we do have some uh, implication. Uh, for those results, what is interesting is the, the extreme values like infinity, infinity, uh, which means that we don't have PCS. So all the stages are compromised uh, every time. And the best um, PCS uh, metric is one zero, meaning that we have only one stage that is assumed to be compromised. Uh, so this is the, the best. Uh, and we kind of have some in-between values. Um, so in our work, we consider also 5G uh, protocols, just to give an expressive, uh, um, expressive argument of our model. Uh, because in 5G, this, this is not a two-party protocol, this is a four-party protocol. And we did some uh, some improvements, and so with our metric, we see that the mechanism that we indeed put uh, are good for PCS. Uh, so in conclusion, we uh, look at um, uh, the healing speed of uh, messaging protocols. For this, we we had to do a um, taxonomy of adversary and keys, so theoretically analyzed. Uh, what are the, the best keys and the worst kind of uh, adversaries. Uh, this allows us to give us a uh, healing speed, so the metric. And so we did, a f we have a fair comparison between protocols uh, for this uh, property. And in, f uh, in future work, we, we do have a, a lot of things to, 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 to include, like, uh, uh, Every uh, keys in those protocols are implicit, have implicit lifetime. So it's, it would be good to, uh, to have a explicit, explicit lifetime. So in uh, TLS for session tickets, for instance, uh, so we can add many features uh, and also look at multi-party uh, protocols. Thank you.